Welcome back. In today's video, let's go over the Design tab. The Design tab governs your most important global design settings. It's the best place to start if you want to improve the general look and feel of the site. So now let's go over the most important settings. First, we have the menu settings. This is a very important section as the menu is usually visible. Here you can change the menu layout, which means changing whether the menu is vertical and at the top, as it is now, horizontal and at the bottom, or perhaps hidden on the side. There's a few different ways to display a menu's layout, but definitely the vertical menu at the top is the most popular. Then the hidden side menu is next. Try playing around with the different layouts. Header toggler refers to the menu switch that toggles the menu from either the left or the right. Cutoff means whether or not you want the menu to stop after four links and become a drop-down list. We do this by default so that the automatic menu doesn't take up too much screen real estate. It's optional. Next, outer spacing means margins. This is a good one. It'll significantly change the look and feel of the menu, especially if you also remove the rounded borders and change the background effect. Now, the background color. To get a good background color for the menu or for anything in the tools, take a look at the original desktop site colors. With Savvy Fork, they emphasize the green, but what's the code for that green? I use a Chrome extension called Eyedropper that you can get for free at the Chrome Web Store. The extension adds an eyedropper to Chrome, and if I click on it, I can click on any color on the page and get the code copied to my clipboard. If I now go back to our tools, I can paste the hex color, hit save, and voila, my menu looks more appropriate. Next idea. If you ever need to hide a menu link, the settings for this unfortunately aren't here. You need to select the menu item, making sure you select the whole container and not just the text, and hit Hide Element. This writes a rule on the CSS tab that you can delete if you make a mistake. Now, one last important point about the automatic menu. If you don't want the automatic menu, but prefer to create a slimmed down, simple menu, try doing this. Go back to the Content Selector tab and deselect the menu. Hit Save, and make sure you save your changes for all pages under Advanced. This deactivates the automatic menu. Then, you can go to our Plugins page and insert a custom menu. All the same settings are here, but you have more control over the links your users will see. Moving on to the next section, we have the header section, which is the area around the logo. If for some reason you don't like the logo that our system automatically finds, you can upload a custom mobile logo here or specify the URL of the right logo from your desktop website. To do this, go to your desktop site, right click on the logo and choose Open Image in New Tab. Then, copy the URL and insert it in our tools. Hit Save. Now we have a better logo, but our background color is still off. So let's go back, use our eyedropper to get the green again, paste the hex color into the tools, and hit save. There you go, much, much better. Okay, let's move on to the body section. This section controls, you guessed it, the style of the main body. These settings are pretty standard, like background color, font color, font family, and the links color. 
Importantly, you may want to set the font color of your links manually so that they stand out on the page better. Next, we have the footer section. This section is basically the same as the header section with all the standard settings, except you can insert custom HTML, JavaScript, or plain text here. This is really useful if you want to put copyright details or special links just in the footer and maybe have the copyright year update automatically via JavaScript. Moving on, we have two special sections for page backgrounds. Basically, you can specify a background image or color for the whole site or for the page that you're working on. The current page background will override the settings for the global background, so you can customize one page without affecting all the rest. And finally, the tablet section allows you to turn off the automatic tablet view, which by default displays a special layout just for iPads and other tablets. If you do so, the site will have the same layout on tablets as it does on a mobile phone.